sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun Amen Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we're indeed grateful for this opportunity to come before you, worship you this morning. Lord, we're just thankful that you, as we approach this birth of Christ, that we can celebrate, and we can just thankful that you did send your Son, that through accepting Him and putting our faith in Him, we can have eternal life, Lord. We're just thankful that you saw that we would be born in this country of freedom, Lord, that we would have the right to worship you. And, Lord, we just pray that you would continue to give each another a strength, that we would stand up for those freedoms which we have been earned so many years ago, Lord, just that we would not give those freedoms up to worship you, Lord. And, Lord, we just lift up many of this church family, this community. They're sick. In many uh, financial situations, just be with them, Lord. And just be as the one to bring a message that if a lost soul will be saved before it's too late. Be with us now as we continue to his service. God and watch over and protect us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Boys and girls, time to go. All right. Don't you like it when some people are excited about what's going on? Okay. You had your Cypress heart and you have this. Dan's already mentioned it. This is the week of prayer. We're going to talk about prayer today. Um, As you see this, oftentimes you go, that's nice, more junk in the cypress heart, and you just kind of let it go. That's not the intention of this. If you'll open it, it goes through all of these days. In each one of the days, you're praying for a place, some very specific things for the missionaries there. The intention is that you would take this home and begin to pray and pray every day through this next week. Now, I want you to know something. I've talked to a lot of IMB folks, missionaries from all over the world. And when things like this roll around, like their birthday, and, you know, a lot of people pray for the missionaries on their birthdays, uh, they get excited. They start planning things that they know that, God is wanting to do in their area to happen during times like this because they know people are praying for them all over the world and they're counting on those special times of prayer. And so as you, as you pray for these things, you have to understand there are people on the other side of the world and people right down the road who are doing uh, North American missions work in Galveston and places like that. They're excited because you're praying for them. Now, as we talk about prayer today, and what does it take to pray, and does it really matter uh, at all that you personally pray, um, I I wanted to uh, just take a moment and put up something on the screen uh, that's kind of a conglomeration of share buttons. And so uh, I think that's going to come up. There it is. Uh, Y'all recognize those share buttons? Uh, is that like a big, massive piece of social media that goes on? Facebook is there, and Twitter is there, and Dig is there, and you, you look at all of those things. How much time do you think that we spend as a culture now, especially from younger, moving up, on social media? They're saying that the average kid now spends 
at least 50 hours in front of some kind of a screen every week. It could be his phone, it could be his Game Boy, it could be the television, whatever it is, at least 50 hours. And part of that is on social media. And so probably the most important communication that we ever do in our lifetime is the time we spend communicating with God. And guess what's happening to the time that we spend communicating with God? The enemy has always known that if he cannot make you bad, he'll make you busy. Right? Because it's the same effect. You'll start being concerned about other issues and situations, and so you don't do the things that matter to you the most. I want you to look with me today at a small passage of Scripture, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. And I've put this up, five different translations. Um, no, keep going. I don't know why that's even coming up. Is it not going to go? Ah, there it is. Okay. As you look, every one of those is the same verse. But there are some different words that are there that are discussing the very same things. And so the end of the world is coming soon. Peter says, therefore, be earnest and disciplined. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded. You say, well, how can it be all these different words? The Greek word can be translated with any one of these English words accurately. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. In other words, as they do translation work, uh, these words are all one and the same in Greek. The end of things, all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayers. NIV, the end of all things is there, there, near, therefore be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Now as you look at these, there are really two categories and just one purpose. Uh, as you look at the first set, sober minded, earnest, serious, and self-controlled, uh, do those not all go together? In other words, if a person can control themselves... Uh, they have a sober-mindedness about themselves. They can be earnest about the things that they do. They can be serious. It can be important to them. Second of all, then you see disciplined, watchful, sound judgment, alert, sane, that helps, and sensible. And so these things are talking about structurally in your mind that you have a sound mind. Now, in your prayers is in this phrase, for the sake of your prayers is why you're doing this. Why do we have to be sober-minded, earnest, serious, self-controlled, disciplined, watchful, sound of judgment, alert, saying all of these things, why? Because prayer is so important. This passage is telling us that in the end times, prayer is going to be so very much more important not in the sense that prayer wasn't important before, but this may be the only way we get through these times successfully is to constantly be in prayer. Now, what happens is, more often than not, when we get in that dynamic of either the devil's trying to make us bad or make us busy, uh, we get into some situations where even as believers, we may find ourselves living in a way that we should not. Uh, there's a lot of lying today. Uh, there's a lot of sexual immorality today. There's a lot of just uh, ignoring the things of God today. It's, it's very commonplace. And in Micah chapter 3, I've been verse...
through accepting Him and putting our faith in Him, we can have eternal life, Lord. We're just thankful that You saw that we would be born in this country of freedom, Lord, that we would have the right to worship You. And, Lord, we just pray that You would continue to give each another a strength that we would stand up for those freedoms which we have been earned so many years ago, Lord, just that we would not give those freedoms up to worship you, Lord. And, Lord, we just lift up many of this church family, this community. They're sick in many uh, financial situations. Just be with them, Lord. And just be as the one to bring a message that if a lost soul will be saved before it's too late. Be with us now as we continue to his service. God and watch over and protect us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Boys and girls, time to go.